the same issues we had last time. We had some sound issues. We had some uh, video issues. We had connection issues. But you know, I, I I did a couple of tests, and hopefully we've fixed everything and things are working okay. Well, tonight um, I'm going to be working on a comic that I've been basically developing since I was in college, and uh, that was in 2003 uh, to 2007. I went to Curry College, and that's in Northern Massachusetts. And um, yeah, I came up with this stuff uh, while I was on vacation, and uh, you know, my connection to the undersea stuff. And I'll show you some other pages. This is one, the first page from the new series, new, new book. And here's the second page where Krakus is distracting um, UH and steals his wallet. And he's like, darn, you just missed it. And he's like, it's okay, you're a good person. And as you can see, he has his wallet. And we're going to be doing the next page, which he has, you know, taken the money out of the wallet, swam away, from somewhere, and then he looks up and see this light, and we see that he's at an undersea casino. So, I mean, it's 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 a it's an introduction to his character, and you know, Krakus is kind of a uh, mischievous kind of fellow. Um, and as you can see, the art has changed a little bit since when I first did this this drawing, when I first got the idea to go back into it, because this was drawn completely digitally. Um, it was done with the Wacom tablet. And uh, it was done entirely in Photoshop. And I decided to go back to the drawing on boards with ink and that kind of stuff. So, and I actually have something that I'll share later that was the uh, first drawing I ever did, um, finished drawing. Like I did sketches and sketchbooks and stuff. But as you can see, I have some blue pencil here. And how I do these pages is, is I do the quick little thumbnail and then I do a full size. Um, Layout with the lettering of where I'm going to do the placements and you know the dialogue as I have it at that point. Um, but the whole point of Undersea here is to have fun. Um, it's been a stressful couple of weeks, so we're going to do some fun that I enjoy doing. And, uh, I've always enjoyed Undersea stuff. My, my appreciation for Aquaman is. Um, did the butt of jokes for years at conventions, but it's all in good fun because you know he's kind of a silly premise. And what I'm doing at this point is, is I really only have the rough idea down. And um, when I have the rough idea down in blue pencil, it is not finished. Like I still need to tighten up some of the anatomy and some of the you know other elements and details and that kind of stuff. Um, and I also push the expressions a little further in pencil. Hey, Brian. Uh, do we sound okay this time? I don't know. I haven't had any comments yet. So. But. Well, Krakus uh, is my mischievous uh, gets into gets into trouble character. Um, you know, I, I think of a character, other characters in pop culture that are kind of like his personality, except, you know, he's, he's a, uh, a cuttlefish, so he's an alien. And that's one of the jokes that comes in and out, like, is he from space? Is he not from space? You know, because people always say, like, oh, well, Cephalopods are aliens. They came down in uh, in meteors. Uh, I'll buy. I, it looks like I'll have to buy a microphone or something. So I'm, I'm, I planned on going out and doing that today, but I just didn't have the gusto. I can try different audio inputs, but that's that's the extent of what I can change. I can either use the camera input, the computer input, or my headphone input. This is the one from uh, last time that everybody said sounded fine when I did a little test. Like it wasn't perfect, but 
was, like you said, legible. I'll try. I'll try one fix, and if it doesn't, I'll just mute it and call it a night. Because I'm just. Because I have it on default. I don't know. I'll try it. I'll try that. Is that any better? Or is that worse? I don't know anymore. Things have been very tough lately, so. I do, okay, cool. Well, we'll go with that setting this time, which strangely is different than the last setting that people said worked. Hooray. It's weird because I tried different audio inputs and like different ones work on different nights. And I, you know, I think I should just get like a new headset that has like the microphone built in. You know, I just have cheap headphones. Like one of those gamer headphone dealies. But thanks for coming out and hanging out with me. I can show something to you guys. There's only four four people watching right now, uh, but Brian, you'll get a kick out of this. This is the when I was a freshman in college. A freshman drawing class uh, was when I first did a finished undersea hero drawing, and it was for my senior project. Uh, uh, not senior project. Freshman end of year final project. That's that's what it was. Uh, senior project was three years later, but this was the first uh, finished drawing of undersea hero. As you can see, here's the hand done logo. This is all brush, you know, poorly drawn, but this was, you know, 20 years ago now. Um, but, you know, the correlator, uh, Undersea Hero and Liquid Lab. And I had originally intended to have this lady as like a scientist who was like the every person that you could relate with, but I decided you know, with this one, we have so many uh, other characters. And then here is um, Jana War. And I hadn't come up with uh, Colonel Feathers and stuff, but this is what I did in college, you know, when I was a young lad. And some of the uh, ideas were, were from there, like the whole idea of the undersea hero world look was a combination of real and like what you see in a cheap aquarium at a store. Like those visual cues, like the stupid gravel on the bottom. Like the uh, yeah the neon gravel on the bottom of the fish tank, and then like the plants that look fake. So that was the idea for like the the aesthetic of the world. I I you know I thought of like you know life aquatic where they looked underwater and things looked looked fake, and I wanted to combine that with the real stuff because there was a time when I was going the marine biology route. I worked at an aquarium for years. Um, on Nantucket. And uh, I used to go on marine collecting trips. I did some stuff with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. And um, yeah, I even got my name in a, in a couple of books with them because I would go, I knew the waters around Nantucket so well that I would go and they'd say, hey, we need, um, you know, we need you to find us a kingfish and we need you to find us um, a nudibranch and like some other species. And I would know where to go get them. Like I would know where to go find them. And every year the, the aquarium was a seasonal place. And every year the, um, we would go and we would catch the, um, catch the fish at the beginning of the year that would go on display. And on Nantucket in the summertime, there's a phenomenon coming off of the, um, the Gulf Stream called these eddies. 
And they're literally underwater streams of hot water that come up from tr the tropics. And in them come juvenile fish, fish eggs. Um, what you see if you ever go to the Pacific is called sargassum. It's these big floating uh, estuaries that are just floating live seaweed. And uh, they break off and float in the ocean. And, you know, obviously creatures hide in them and they live in them. And we would get things like mangrove snappers and permit and all these other um, look downs and needlefish and all these other warm water fish in the summertime, these juvenile ones. And what we would do is, is because if we left them in the water um, or we let them go at the end of the summer, Nantucket High School, uh, their science department would uh, keep them over the wintertime. And that way, in the, you know, the summertime opens up again, we would have a handful of you know, hopefully everything survives, but, you know, stuff happens. Um, Full-size tropical fish for people to come and take a look. And we would run marine ecology field trips, and we would take people seining, and we would catch all sorts of local creatures and stuff. And seine nets are these big nets that are like 12 to 15 feet across, and they have poles on the end, and you just drag them through the water. And I actually, um, last year, started keeping a, a fish tank of local fish in my apartment. And I would just go out with a dip, dip net and catch local killifish and sticklebacks and some hermit crabs and do the same thing I did at the aquarium and keep them for the summer and then let them go. I haven't set up the tank yet this year, but I plan on going uh, and getting that going probably in the next couple of weeks. Got to wait till the water is a little warmer. Last time when I went out... Um, you know, other than killifish around here, there's kingfish, there's uh, purple shore crabs, which are an introduced species. So like, as you can see, you know, I find this stuff highly fascinating. And I, I still to this day follow like the Monterey Bay Aquarium online. Their, their Twitter is fantastic. And there's, there's some ROVs that have constant uh, surveillance in the ocean. And um, one of the things I like to talk about are, are the discoveries that they continue to make in the ocean. Um, most people don't realize that they still discover large species of animals. You know, as recently as 2014, they discovered an entirely, entirely new undocumented species of whale. Like it was a baleen whale, a finback whale. And, um, you know, whalers have been in the oceans for hundreds of years and boats and everything. And this very rare whale decided to stay hidden for the entirety of our scientific ecological expeditions up until we could identify it uh, only a few years ago. Um, and there's all sorts of amazing creatures underwater. And it's uh, one of the reasons why I just find it so fascinating. You know, ever since my dad took me fishing as a kid and um, working for Mariah Mitchell on Nantucket, those were experiences that really like shaped uh, my interest. And, you know, one of the main reasons I didn't continue on in the in the science world was like I just um, you know I, I wasn't smart enough to do the math like the I was okay with um, doing any sort of geometry anything visual but once you got to the point where you were getting into hypothetical math I was I was lost and I tried real hard to stick to it but because the other thing I did was, is if you visited the aquarium between, I would say, 2000, actually late, earlier than that, I would say 97 to 2003, um, they still had some of my drawings um, on the ID cards at the aquarium. And uh, some of the books that I had contributed some stuff to, they still sell to this day. Um, and I remember where and when. I caught the fish that they photographed to put into those books. Um, it's just a whole different, different life that I had. You know, I still read comics. Like I would, on Nantucket, there were two places to get comics. There was the hub and then there was the, uh, the grocery store. And uh, a little later, there was a, the Nantucket Variety Store, which started to carry comic books. But the, the one thing that was true about all of them was is that they, they didn't carry any um, 
miniseries or anything like that. So, you know, during the summer, all I ever read was like the main X-Men book, the main Spider-Man book, the main Batman book, you know, any other books I had to catch up on, you know, when I got back to school in the mainland. And, and the good thing about having summer jobs is, is you know, you had some extra cash to, to, you know, pick up a trade of what you missed or um, pick up some, some comics. As you can see, I'm tightening up and I'm really looking at line thickness because in the case of Undersea Hero, it's a simplified art style compared to Helena or some of the other like Ninja Turtles or some of the other books I've you know done stuff for or Red Sonia. And I wanted to have a fun feel to it. So you'll see it, you'll see little bits and pieces of uh, like my my style in the tick, but I'm really really focusing on foreground middle ground background with line thickness like you'll see when i ink this that this arm this tentacle here and then this tentacle here will have the thickest lines with the exception of maybe here this baseline here to establish where Krakus is and uh you know for the backgrounds i really am just going shorthand like just little wavy lines to give us some bit of composition because in this case he's got a big speech bubble you can maybe see it a little bit It'll be right there and right there. So anything that's over here would be covered up. And we want to have lots of room for bright colors. Like this book is about, about being bright and fun. And I am talking about Nantucket, Jay. I just talked about it for a long time. I'll talk more about Nantucket. Um, one of the cool phenomena uh, of, of Nantucket is its shape as we talked about with the, the warm bits of water coming in off the Gulf Stream, um, it's shaped like a crescent. You know, Nantucket is shaped like this. And the Gulf Stream comes out right along here and eddies, as we were talking about those phenomenon of warm water come off like this. And Nantucket is perfectly shaped to catch them. There's a little harbor here. And then out at the end here is Muskegon Island. And just in from that is Eel Point. Now, at Eel Point, there's a really cool uh, gigantic tide pool called the bathtub. And you can't drive to it. You can drive on the beach in certain parts of Nantucket, but you can't get all the way to the bathtub anymore. It's been closed off for years. Um, but at the end of Eel Point, shaped like this, and then there are two giant tide pools. This one only opens up to this one at the highest of high tide. And this one only closes at the lowest low tide. So this one remains open and this one remains closed. And the water in this one can sometimes be 20 degrees warmer than the water here and here. And that's a perfect place for those tropical fish to hide out. So when we would do trips out there, we would either take the, take the boat out and you know, land right here, or we would hoof it if we walked, it was about one and a quarter miles on the sand of walking. And we found all kinds of crazy stuff there, full-size look downs. And actually one of the things that we did document that was very cool was actually, um, it had not been documented that there were year round species of butterfly fish living in Massachusetts. And they had come up in the Gulf Stream, just like I said earlier, and they had fully established and they were breeding. They were there year round and they made it through winters. And there was actually winters where the harbor froze over and those fish still made it. It was it was a long hoof, let me tell you. And uh, we actually stopped doing public trips out there. We would do private ones, but the problem was is like, you know, we would warn people, but they still would be like, oh no, you know, we can walk a mile and a half or so. And then when you have to do it both ways, there's no bathroom, you know, it's a, you have to prepare and it's mentally taxing. And, um, you know, and on Nantucket, there are a few different types of cephalopods. Uh, since we have our cuttlefish here, uh, there, are, there are plenty of squid, which you see around. And there are also occasionally cuttlefish in, in, in Massachusetts. But li living on Nantucket um, and working on Nantucket is definitely different than vacationing on Nantucket. Uh, my, uh, one of my mother's best friend who was a, uh, my brother and I's godfather um, was a fisherman on the island, and he was actually um, 
a teacher, he was a fisherman, and, and that's how a lot of people survived. They had multiple jobs. A lot of people would do um, drive a cab. And like in Boston, you know, you had to basically like inherit a cabbie license on Nantucket. Um, people worked at bars. You know, you back back in the 90s, you know, you got paid basically 20 bucks an hour to fold T-shirts. You know, it was. But living there cost an exorbitant amount of money because everything cost more to get it over there. Like everything had to be shipped over. There were there is a farm on the island, but the Bartlett farm became not a food for the masses, but it became a food, it became a food source for the elites by having, you know, fancy schmancy stuff instead of just like growing a lot of everything. They had delicious food, though. I love I love their their tomatoes, their sweet peas were great and they, they had a good baking section. You know, and. The, uh, the workforce on the island has always been. Um... Oh, was that, did you take that picture, Kevin, of the, uh, the turtle that you posted? I was wondering. It looked like a, looked like a home shot of a, of a, of a, of a sea turtle. Yeah, that was a great picture. I loved seeing it. Feel free to post any sort of underwater stuff whenever I got under hero, undersea hero stuff going on. I just, to this day, you know. One of the things I like to do in this uh, is use the water um, in the lettering. And like, because Krakus is zooming off, I'm using the water to say zoom, you know, as he's speeding away because, uh, you know, squid and other cephalopods have jet propulsion where they intake water in one valve and they shoot it out of another and it makes them be able to turn like turn on a dime and move at an extremely high rate of speed now if anybody has ever had to catch squid for fishing purposes or for dinner purposes um, i imagine they know that they have little beaks or if you've, you've even just eaten them um, and I can tell you that if you've ever been bitten by a squid, even one like the size of my pinky, like tiny little squid, it feels like an electric shock going through your entire body. It hurts bad. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been bitten by quite a few uh, sea creatures. And for like pound for pound, that was one of the least pleasant. Way worse than getting pinched by a crab or anything like that. All right, well, Krakus has stolen the money. He's zoomed off on his, his adventure. And then we have him looking up at this beaming light down with tears in his eyes of the thing of beauty that is Poseidon's undersea casino. So, um, and in this shot, he's just saying it's, it's so beautiful. And I actually have some uh, some character designs that I did of uh, some of the denizens of the casino uh, that I will put. I'll post. I'll post it either tonight or tomorrow, depending on how late we go and how things go. I'm just glad that the sound is better. You got to be ready to lose it all if you're going to win it all. And it's and it's and it's undersea heroes money. So, what is what is Krakus care one way or the other? And uh, as you'll see in the story, uh, Krakus lives with undersea hero and uh, Liquid Lad in their in their undersea hideout. As their undersea roommate situation is complicated. You know, Krakus, can't you just take out the trash cans? Why do I always have to take them out? You have nine arms. Some of the humor, as you can see, is uh, shaped by some of the work on the tick, but there's definitely going to be some, uh, I would say, more 
<sighs> gusto put behind some of the the humor and um but there's still plenty going to be plenty of heart to it yeah there's a character called radio bear that i'm, I'm particularly fond of Radio Bear, and uh, there's Axel. He's the one of those Axiotals, the little, uh, what you call them, uh, salamanders. Secret Seal. And it's really not about, like, you know, getting too bogged down into the artistic details. In this case, I want to have some big exaggerations and like this really the jokes and the gags to the writing to be a driving force in this rather than taking any sort of a backseat in it and everybody i've shown it to so far like they've had a few chuckles so that's that's what you want or that's what i want i'm not, not projecting maybe you want it to be a serious frank miller dark deconstruction of the superhero genre. Yes, and he's just taken aback by the beauty that is the undersea uh, casino. Um, and this is the kind of stuff that sometimes after a long day, you just want to draw a stupid squid putting everything on red on the roulette table like sometimes that's just what you want to do um, in this case what you'll see here is there's going to be a lot of color um, the light coming down from here i'm going to put color holds on here these will actually be probably white and the little stars in his eyes um, and then it's casting obviously with the light coming from up here it's gonna cast a shadow and you can see a little outline of Krakus on the ground there. And then, you know, to show some of the perspective, I've got some rocks that will also cast shadows. And then it'll just show some sand texture. And then this will actually go from sand and then it'll actually go to nothing because I want the light to be so powerful that it, um, what's the word, it blows out the actual sand. The sand will probably stop right around here. I'm not going to ink that line, but that's just to give you a better visual because the, you know, the light coming down. And um, the casino I actually based off of, um, what was it, the, was it the Sahara Casino? It's a casino that's not there anymore, and it was all done in like modernist uh, architecture. As you can see, like I can just sort of fly around and I'm hoping to get some really big, bold strokes of uh, ink with the brush. And that's going to, you know, instead of getting all the noodly, tiny little details that I get a little hung up on, we're going for bigger swaths of color and boldness. You know, I tend to think of like, who, who, who would I want to draw this if I got hit by a bus tomorrow? You know, with Helena, it's... It, it, there's a number of people that would do a good job, but I think uh, John Lucas would have a lot of fun with it. And um, with this one, I, I don't know. I'm going to think about that. If I get hit by a bus, you know, you can do a GoFundMe to hire uh, someone to finish it. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, Sometimes I lose track of how many of his arms I've drawn. So there might be some panels as you're looking at when the book comes out where he has seven arms or nine arms or 10 arms, but I'm trying. And I'll check again when I color it. And uh, I'm working with a friend of mine to make this, this book come to life. And uh, we've looked into 
new characters. We've looked into the books themselves. I've gotten pricing on the books. Um, we've looked into some different ideas to make the Kickstarter exciting, like a plush uh, Lord Krakus. So I just want it to be something memorable and fun. See, I, I, it's with my own books, because I get so little time to work on them, in my mind, I'm going to be doing them until I'm in the, in the dirt. Um, whether people are deciding to publish them or, or other than me um, or pay for them or not, just because it brings me joy. And, uh, you know, the story for Undersea Hero that I have in mind, I, I know how it ends and it's fairly, it's fairly long. Um, because there's a lot that has to, for the, the payoff that I want, there's a lot that has to happen. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes on. There's a promo that I did where uh, Krakus has his arm over um, Undersea Hero's shoulder. And it's at the bottom of like a, uh, it's a scrolling piece. So like you click on it and you scroll through it and you actually have to scroll through the entire water column to the bottom. And then you see uh, Krakus with his arm over Undersea Hero in front of a, um, a vent, a, a lava vent at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, and, and, and when I have to do it on my dime, you know, I, I, it's, it's a thing where when I looked at the options that were before me at this time in my life, um, you know, as far as someone else publishing it, everybody wanted to change things and tell me how to move things or like what they didn't like about it. And then they tell me that, you know, that they, what they think the sales will be and how much money's involved. And I'm like, you know what, the heck with that. I wanna make what, something I'm proud of and that makes people happy. Oh, no problem, Desiree. Here. There you go. Can't listen. Um, so yeah, with the options before me, I just said, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it my way. And uh, it will probably be my first Kickstarter where I do the whole thing. And uh, that being said, I'm not launching it until the first issue is done. You know, I, I don't have arcs planned. I have an overall story. And that was another thing that was interesting about uh, shopping projects around these days. Like they all want trades. They all want, you know, six issues and then a reboot and um you know one shots don't sell and, and you know i hear all these all these things that are partially true but were not based on what was being discussed as far as what i get out of it worth it in my opinion and uh you know, it's, I still have to do a zillion jobs. Like this, this week I was running around so far like crazy um, after hours and during normal work hours just to uh, keep things moving. You know, the stuff I do for Altered, they've got a lot of new things on the horizon that they're planning. So like none of it's been announced and I have no idea when it'll be announced. Um, so but, you know, when you're doing the artwork for stuff, you have to do it, you know, months and months in advance. So, like, my timelines are so far ahead of everybody else's that it's just like, ugh. I'm just real, really had a tough week mentally. So, I'm just happy to be here working on uh, the goofy stuff that makes me happy. I'm talking about fish, I'm talking about stuff that, you know, they, Maybe in an alternate universe, I was able to do the math and become a 
you know, cetacean biologist or marine biologist of some kind, but I was always great at earth science, but once he started throwing in the, uh, throwing in physics and the advanced statistical analyses, it was too much for me. So instead I draw pictures of silly underwater things <laughs> and hope people like them. <laughs> I need a swig of my peppermint tea. Oh no, not peppermint tonight. Grab the blackberry, I guess. But um, and a lot of this whole visually, as far as the panels go, one of the other things that I intentionally am doing in the book um, is having a lot, a lot, a lot of horizontal panels, because that way when the piece is done, I can stack the pages and have them formatted much more easily for a, a, a venue like Webtoon. Um, now, any anything like that would be years off, but I think that something like this, if I get enough material in the can, I think that people might might enjoy it on that on that sort of format. Oh, that's, that's really awesome, Kevin. It is, it's absolutely amazing. The stuff that you can see just um, anywhere, you know, like I, my, I drive my wife crazy when we are just walking around um, anywhere where there's water. Cause I just love, love looking in the water um, for fish, for turtles, frogs, anything. Um, you know, when we walk down by the beach, there's like these big uh, fiddler crab populations around here because it's like a brackish water and you see them running running along and um in one of the estuaries there's also um this just endless it, it it is endless um an endless parade of hermit crabs and there's just thousands of them and you just you don't have to walk in the water you can see them from just standing on the beach and they're tiny you know they're 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 smaller than this piece of sponge, um, but they're just like crawling along, hundreds of them. You know, I love that kind of stuff. And I love going to the aquarium. Boston has a great aquarium. And also just down the street on 95, uh, the Mystic Aquarium is great. They have beluga whales there. You can go see whales. Uh, some of the first, uh, and that was one of the things my parents were always great about. They would take me to aquariums all over the place. I remember once we were in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and you wouldn't think in the middle of uh, the country like that, there'd be a great aquarium, but there was. It was mostly fresh water. But it was amazing. I was having fun also coming up with like stupid names for things. And uh, one of the house bands is the, the Davy Jones duo, like Davy Jones's locker. But coming up with goofy names for things is, is part of the joys of making comics, as long, along with uh, coming up with stupid sound effects that aren't actual words, but you wish they were words. With Undersea Hero, there's a whole new undersea world of sound effects to exploit. And look, it doesn't have to be a perfect, you know, representation because we're also going to have an opportunity to really punch up the artwork digitally. But I want I wanted to have original artwork. And I wanted to have, because uh, I have more fun when I'm drawing on paper than when I'm drawing digitally. I find drawing digitally to be very stiff. And uh, I also find it to be lacking in certain graphical qualities. Even with the expensive, you know, you can buy a hundred million different 
brushes for Clip Studio and for Photoshop. I just, I still think that everything looks smooth and or mushy when it's done uh, fully digitally. You know, I can crack open a DC or a Marvel book now and, and, you know, you can see that there's no, there was never any paper used in any of it. And it's, and it's obvious. And then you can see when like, you know, I looked at the new Amazing Spider-Man where you have some traditional comic book artists with um, John Romita and Scott Hanna. They had a, they did a free comic day issue and uh, you can see all the little sharp edges on the lines and you can get different effects. And the spatter has a more, uh, what can I say, uh, organic feel to it. Yeah, Doug, it's, it's, it, it's obvious when you know what to look for. And I know, and look, I've had to do it for certain jobs, but anytime I'm doing something for myself, you know, I'm doing it how I want to do it. And that's with stupid old paper. And as you can see, uh, dirty hands from drawing all day. Now this, um, when I roughed it out, I used a grid and my uh, vanishing point was obviously like off the paper, like right about here. And the, the horizon line is right here, just at the top of the doorway. Because I wanted to see under, I'm missing one of the ledges right there, right there. I wanted to see under the, what do you call them, overhangs and such. And uh, the effect that I will use on the giant Poseidon head when I color it is, is I will use a color hold on the entire thing and I'll probably break it up into pieces so that it looks like um, neon. So it looks like a neon sign. And then you can use, and that's actually one of the only times that I think it's it works to use a um, glow effect is when you're trying to get a tiny little glow off of, and it's uniform, you're wanting a uniform effect. Because if the whole uh, piping of the neon is the same diameter and it's in the same perspective, you can use the same effect and the same distance on things and it doesn't look out of place. And Doug, I uh, answered your message. Um, I will I will get back to you this evening. Wednesdays are just always packed. Although today I did not go to the grocery store. Usually it's uh, work all day on altered stuff. And then at lunch break, I go to the grocery store and then get a run in, get a workout, cook dinner, live stream for two hours and then put on a baseball game. But Undersea Hero is just near and dear to my heart. So When I lived in Ohio for a period of time, I even still followed like uh, freshwater. I did a lot of fishing. I would, you know, go hang out. Uh, there was a pond in our neighborhood that had like bass and catfish and all those types of critters in it. But back before I started working uh, more regularly in comics, I drew a lot more goofy stuff. People want things so serious, super serious. Uh, so we can actually see some things. Let's, uh, I'm sure I'm sure everyone will be thrilled to see me outline these uh, these panel borders. It's very exciting. Mm. Ah, here it is.
Very organized. <laughs> it's true, Kevin. I, I've been watching AAA because, man, uh, it's a... The Red Sox are a rough watch right now. Hmm. If uh, if Jeff pops in, I did find his uh, his sketch cover. I can mail that to him. Okay, and with Undersea Hero, what you'll also notice is that it's pretty much all brush. Um, I don't mess around with too much pen unless it's for um, a texture or a shorthand technique. Because this is cartooning. This is cartooning and graphic design. This is, I wouldn't look at this as necessarily, if I were describing it academically, I wouldn't call it uh, necessarily illustration. And there's some artists out there that still do terrific brush, brush work. Um, you just don't see it all too often. Because it takes, it, it does tend to take longer. Um, to figure out than, you know, using pens or markers. And ever since I found these uh, Kiritaki Sable brush pens, I, I, I'm not going back. Like I saw some pros talking about Raphael brushes and I, I used them for years. They're, they're great brushes. The amount of time going back and forth that you save is, is measurable. Um, and the quality I think is very, very close to the Raphael. It's good sable, you get a great point, you can get great consistency. Hey, I, 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 I imagine if you add together the years of my life, of just going back and forth with the brush to the to the inkwell, um, it's a lot. I know everyone's got their their allegiances in art supplies. Um, you know, I, I use the Windsor Newtons, and then in my opinion, the ones I was able to get, even ordering them online, were not as good as the, um, the Raphael brushes. They were fraying, they were losing their point very quickly. And hey, maybe I was getting garbage, just a garbage batch, what can I say? When I was in uh, Paris, and I literally just walked into a random store. This was not, you know, at the museum. This was not at any place. I just walked into like a bookstore that had some art supplies and they had top quality Windsor Newton brushes right by the counter that in the States, because I would say, Stores don't have a lot of demand for them, so they don't carry them. You got a special order. They just weren't. They, they were nowhere near as good. Um, and when I switched to Raphael, those, if I were to go back to regular brushes again, that's probably where I would go, just because I was able to consistently get good ones. Thank you, Kevin, and thanks for sharing that picture. Love seeing it, man. Share your uh, your snorkeling pictures anytime. Hmm. 
No. Uh... <laughs> well, right now he's calm. He's he's like you know this is he's in his element. He's just still on the wallet, so he's got fairly calm eyes. And then you know the tears in his eyes filled with joy and beauty eyes that come up and. You know, he doesn't have a mouth, so like his eyes and his tentacles are going to be his main source of expression uh, throughout the series. I did a strip when I was first really pushing to do this before I switched to doing more Helena stuff because I wanted to get that first issue done. Um, I did a series of like three page strips hey you know we 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 get stuck with uh we don't always get to choose the team but i you know i enjoy watching the uh, the, the woo socks but the red Sox are bad right now they are they are not good Um, but I did a series of three, three page stories of undersea hero. And, uh, one of them was just where Lord Krakus was looking at the number of victories he had had over the ocean and mankind and things that, you know, superior beings like Lord Krakus should have victories over. And, uh, he decided with his pals to, uh, storm a random beach that had a uh, a guy digging for clams on it and uh he and his his noble warriors cuddle across the uh the surface of the beach from one side to the other there was one singular casualty and uh they made it to the other side of the beach and uh Lord Krakus added another victory to his list of victories, which he carries around with him. He literally carries list of victories in his, his back pocket. We all know people that do that. They keep a mental list of victories. Trying to have nice swooping uh, lines that have a good change in line thickness. That is one thing that working with a brush uh, is much, much faster than dealing with markers or pens. And you'll see when I finish these pages, there's always white out trying to get the right line thickness. And if there's something I don't like, I'll just go in and take it out. Uh, Krakus has a list of victories because uh, he sees most things as his enemy. And he, he triumphs over them. He's more worried about the victories. This is one of those little cartoonist tricks that um, to create volume, you have a narrow line with a parallel thicker line and it just creates more gravity and volume. <sighs> That's right. Like 
Like if he is at the grocery store and uh, even though it says, you know, one coupon per person, if he gets to use two, he takes out the list and marks it down as a victory. I like really organic panel borders. So I just go with a brush and just rough them out. Because I generally look at the idea behind panel borders as creating a visual break. And as long as it successfully does that, I think that you can use many, many different ways to have panels. I mean, I don't even think panel borders are necessary um, for certain things, but if people do choose to use them, you can have some fun with them. And I'm just looking to expand my own stuff, doing more of my own stories. Yeah. It's really, I think it's something that I haven't had the ability to do before and I didn't make the time for it. But I think I, I really, at this point in the game, you know, maybe someday I'll get a, a run on a book that, you know, gets me the clout to put stuff at image or these other places. But until that time, you know, whether or not that happens, who knows, but I can control putting out my own material to a certain degree. This needs to be thicker. One thing about crack is that it is a little tough to draw are the little suction cups on his feet. And those I'll use a, uh, a, a, um, a pen for just because if I use a brush on them, it'll take longer and this is meant to be fun. You know, and I've seen a lot of people have a lot of success with uh, their just for fun comics. So who knows? Who knows? People might like it. Hey, have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, I don't expect as many, many folks on this stream because there's no giveaway. But we'll probably do another one next week. I was just stressed out this week and wanted to do something a little easier, a little more fun, a little less like, oh, God, did I mess it up? I think for these suction cups, I have to use the brush just to get the thicker lines. Uh, what were other jobs I had on Nantucket? I worked at the Mariah Mitchell Aquarium. Uh, that was the first job I ever had. And it, at first I was just a volunteer. And then I was a paid, what they called a paid volunteer, which meant they gave me a little bit of money for school. Um, and it was, it was nice. And then I worked at Barry Thurston's Tackle Shop, where I basically, you know, at first it was just selling gear, but then I, you know, Barry realized that I knew my way around fishing equipment and uh, he had me doing some of the repairs. He would handle the expensive repairs that he was liable for. You know, when somebody brings in like a $50,000 rig, you know, he would want to be the one to work on it. I don't blame him because it's 
you know, you screw that up. It, it's no small thing. But um, yeah, I fixed stuff for the charter captains. Um, one of the more famous people that used to come in, there were, there were celebrities that came in on Nantucket on their vacations. And one of the guys that came in was actually uh, Coach Belichick uh, for the Patriots. And um, yeah, I, I think I fixed his gear every year. It's no secret they talk about that he, you know, vacations there. I think he's mentioned it. But Barry Thurston's tackle shop is closed, so it's now an expensive sandwich place. And if that doesn't tell you how most of Nantucket goes, then you haven't really been there. And I don't like to overdo the details. Like uh, in the case of uh, Krakus's spots, I really only put them in foreground elements and on top of his head. Everywhere else, you know, I use it to inform the viewer of the proximity to the camera because he has those spots over his whole body. But I'm not, and they change color and all that stuff that you know, cuttlefish can do. But I really just it's kind of a way for me to have a shorthand way to describe where stuff is because if you do spots over the whole thing it can just be over over overpowering um, and i see that a lot with um artists who are you know just getting their start out or they don't have the grasp of a character yet i do it too you know i absolutely will over detail but yeah i think that's that's plenty of spots And uh, we'll work on these little suction cups here. They don't have to be perfect. You know, we want them to have just a little bit of, because people aren't going to notice them when, when they're shrunk down. You know, I think they would notice if it was just a smooth, smooth line. So. Um, something to drink losing my voice thanks mika we were having fun talking about nantucket and beach walks and the whaling museum which was the next job i had after barry thurston's and uh working for barry at the tackle shop last i saw barry he was actually a tour guide out at great point so um And actually, my, my wife, Camille, got to meet him, which was nice. Mika, you might get a kick out of it. If, uh, if you wish, uh, go back to earlier in the video. You can scroll back and see. I showed the uh, my college undersea hero project, um, which was the first time I ever did a finished drawing of the character and some of the supporting cast. And uh, I remember the kind of look on the faces of the people um, because back, you know, at that, as a freshman, you have to present your work to the class as well as the professor. And uh, you had to talk about it and do critique. And it was really, it was a good exercise because they were trying to get people to learn how to describe their work and talk about their work, you know, in a way that people, other people understand. And, um, I just remember the look on people's faces when I was like, oh, yeah, the, uh, the squid talks. Oh, it was a cuttlefish, but, you know, they all were kind of confused. But I, I had earlier in the year done another weird comic uh, for a project. So they were a little they were a little more prepared. Um, I did a project in that class where it was a comic book about just a gas station 
attendant that had superpowers and he he um his power was simply like he could you know he had minor telekinesis so he would like make a car get a flat tire or you know need an oil change or something um and his his associate was a talking squirrel so but, you know it was it was a weird time weird college was a weird time but But yeah, that was, that was, I had read so many uh, over the top comic superpower stories that I was kind of like pushing back on that. I was like, what about the ordinary people? Like, do they all have to go to some school or join some team? Can't they just like live their lives? And was this guy a crook? I don't know. Like I kind of put this gas station, like you'd see in the movies, like um, I think of the one from, uh, what was that movie? Uh, the first vacation movie, where the uh, the car breaks down in the middle of nowhere. That was kind of like where I pictured it. Middle of the desert, like it's the only thing around for miles, and it's this guy who uses his superpowers to like pop people's tires and make money for groceries. Are you on Nantucket right now, Mika? I think I saw that you were heading out that way on your on your Facebook. You don't have to answer. Like I just was thinking out loud. Hey, who knows? I'll, I'll I'll call up the whaling museum and the aquarium on Nantucket, and maybe they'll maybe Mariah Mitchell will carry it in the gift shop. Just like the old days. Unfortunately, my my connection to uh, the whaling museum, my my old boss uh, Georgina, she retired. I'm happy for her, but I'm just saying, like, you know, the person who I would have called to be like, hey, you want to carry my book? Oh, that's lovely to hear. I'm glad you're there. I'm hoping to get back for a day or two, you know, this summer sometime. Depending on work, of course. And see, that's that's one panel, so it's uh, it's real simple. And that's uh, that's how you draw a uh, cuttlefish robbing a man blind. Um, so, if anyone comes up with a, a good goofy name for uh, undersea money, like sea bucks, or you know. Puns are puns are welcome. Oh, I absolutely saw that, Brian. Of course, I saw that. Yeah. And the uh, little known fact: uh, the Mariah Mitchell Aquarium was the railroad station, the, the the original one, the little tiny shed that was there. Um, so yeah, I, I have seen your work in the wild. I didn't know it was you, but I have seen your work. Small world. Yeah, when I worked at the uh, um, museum, that was when I actually did, and, and this was all Georgina pulling the strings for me. Depth of currency, see? Sand dollars, see? This is this is the type of material that crowdsourcing right here. But 
silly names for ordinary things that don't need silly names, but just make it better. Um, but when I worked at the uh, Whaling Museum, I used to eat my lunch over at the, uh, the Steamship Authority and just sit on the edge uh, and see the boats come in and out uh, across Brant Point. And when the big uh, steamship came in, it would drop all the cars off, people got off, they'd load it back up. But when it pulled out and it kicked up the water, you could see big striped bass and other fish and dogfish and stuff come up from the bottom as it was pulling out. And see, just working on these pages is just way more relaxing. It's organic shapes. There's some indoor stuff in the casino, and like I'm not looking forward to drawing the roulette table itself, but um, you know, none of this is too stress too stressful. And here's an example of like, this is one of those stupid, uh, like $2 decorative glow in the dark fish tank things that I had as a kid. And, you know, you would think that the fish would swim through it or whatever, but they, they, they never did. So I think if you had little neon tetras or any such fish. I tell you, this is uh, the most fun I've had drawing in a few days, let me tell you. It's been some tough stuff to draw lately. And I think it's because, honestly, when I have to pencil and ink stuff, I get into a little bit of a groove, but then when I have to stop to do the coloring or the production on another book or something, you know, it just throws me off mentally and it takes me a day or two to get back into it. And, Deadlines don't give you a day or two to get back into things. So you just got to kind of like force, I have to force myself through um, whether or not I have it or not. See, I like the, I like prawn shop. Prawn shop will be in there somewhere. Now we're cooking. And I am going to try to avoid any sort of like pop culture references, I think, just because I think that that would severely date stuff immediately. So try to keep it universal. There's another page I'm working on where there, there's different types of like cheap plastic plants that they sell at the store. And, uh, you know, one of them kind of looks like the banana leaves. And then at the bottom, they've got like these plastic anchor things. And then there's the other ones that are like layered like this. And there's like big strands of them. And that's the type of stuff that I'll be adding all over the place in the background. Like, a, uh, if I had those character designs and I knew how to post them in the chat, I would. I just, uh... <laughs> I mean, do you think George would let me have a, a crack at like a, a caped cod crossover? I don't know. Like. I, that, that's, I, one can dream, one can dream that Cape Cod could show up and just like, or be in the background gambling uh, at the casino, because I think that he would do that. It was funny that 
uh, one story that I wrote for NEC um, and did the script and did the artwork um, was the free comic book day with the rocket car on the front. And um, I had Cape Cod hook up with Mindy at the end, the, the, the cheerleader character that Sean created. And it was so weird because he was like, that's, that's funny, uh, uh, George and editorial. And then, it, you know, just as we were going to press, he was like, oh, I don't know if we can do this. <laughs> We drew everything and you said it was funny. But I, I was able to convince him to keep it in there. Yeah, and this little corner here, like, again, it's something that people are going to hopefully go right past when they're reading, but like, it is definitely something that I had in my childhood fish tank. Uh, my buddy, my buddy uh, Joe St. Pierre that I did that um, new Zodiacs piece. Brian, you gotta save some of these. Like we can't, we can't be getting these out in public. These are, these are too good. There's just so many underwater superhero books that people are just chomping at the bit to to put out. I, I would be afraid that they'd steal uh, steal our giant market. And then here's a shorthand for depth that um, I use when I'm cartooning. I do it sometimes with illustration, but mostly when I'm cartooning, you'll see where you use the same shape, the same overall um, silhouette. So it reads as the same thing, but you just black it out. And then that makes it, it gives you layers. Like this is in front of the grass and then this grass is in front of this grass. And, you know, it just gives you some layers to work with. It also gives you less things you have to color. And I'll probably put like, these will be like purple with orange stripes that were like poorly like spray painted on. And I'm sure when I was a kid, they were done like as toxic paint that killed your fish. But uh, I absolutely had them in my fish tank. This Krakus is so small that when it reproduces, you're not going to be able to tell that. Um, what it was inked with. Like if I inked this with a brush and spent all the time to do the little teeny hair lines, like in the printed book, no one, no one will, will see it. So that's why I'm okay using a pen for, you know, this, this chunk. And the idea also with the water, um, and I was talking about just using, um, different colored background water for uh, some sort of minor um, compositional elements. And in here, I'm actually using it as a directional device. Uh, you'll see when I ink this edge of the water and the word zoom that I want you to go from this speech bubble to here to here, and then it brings you down here. And then these little light glistens and the bright light. So like you're going, you're reading, you know, left to right as you go, the light brings you back, you read this caption, and then you come back down this sign, the line that you'll see from this sign, and this will be the hardest black. This will be all black. So that's the anchor that you go from here down and then over and you'll have more hard black in the foreground. So like the idea of the page, while it looks like simple shots in the same shape frames all the way down, they're orchestrated in such a way so that I'm directing the eye, hopefully for people to make it easier to follow and to give you more motion and action, like the zoom, I want you to feel him moving as, as you're reading along. And this I will use brush on because I want really like shaky almost like the lines you see on the outside here, just finer. And if you know uh, about cuttlefish, their little fins on the side are always moving. So you never want to draw. If you ever want to take a shot at drawing Krakus, you can always just do a little 
like this. They're kind of shaped like this, but they go around the edge. So there's a curve to them. Um, but yeah, that, that piece I did for the new Zodiacs, I interrupted myself. Um, Joe's going to do a um, Undersea Hero piece for me when, I, when, the, when the Kickstarter comes around. So we're going to trade pieces. And uh, that's how I like working with uh, my friends. I like trading artwork. And in this, the case of this piece, this this part, I will use like a white spatter so that it looks like tiny little bubbles coming through and the zoom will be in white. We want thicker lines in the foreground here. Yeah, there's a there's a character called uh, the Spider Crab that he's gonna draw, and um, it's a spider crab with a robotic suit. It looks kind of like uh, that Marvel trademarked character that Joe Saint Pierre has drawn professionally before. If Doug's still floating around, I'll uh, I'll see if he's he'd be willing to let me hire him to do a an undersea hero piece like he did for Helena. He did that great pinup and variant cover. I think he would do a tremendous job. He might do too good of a job though. That's what I got to worry about. See, Joe Joe's not a. Uh, not known for for humorous uh, cartoon strips like he's done some, but it's not like his his wheelhouse. He's action adventure through and through, and he does um, amazing stuff. So I'm hoping that like there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a challenge for him. And I got to get a Jay Kennedy piece without a doubt. See, I figured, I, I knew that was your, gonna be your, your, you were gonna like Krakus mark down your victories as, as you go forward. Draw better than blank, check. Well, the other thing that's good about the undersea hero, having both undersea hero and Helena is that I've met so many artists over the years that all draw different stuff. And with undersea hero, I think I can get some people, uh, hire some friends of mine that maybe wouldn't necessarily work for, you know, a Helena piece or wouldn't want to do a Helena piece or have turned down a Helena piece. So, you yeah. know. And I've absolutely had people turn down. Uh, Smiting of enemies is the, is the jewelry. I told you in my message, I almost got sucked into a, a pointless, uh, what looked like a either a comment beef or a tweet beef today, but I avoided that one. Steered clear. 
had the comment in, was going to hit enter, and was like, no, this is bad. This is very bad. <sighs> and whereas I think I'm going to go forward with the retro style coloring on Helena, I think I will just keep big bright colors for Undersea Hero. I want it to be as, I want it to just have absurd, bright, glowing colors. And it also just flexes different muscles. Like if you saw the Wally comics, like those were like, you know, very, very bright. And that's kind of the direction color wise, I think would work best for Undersea Hero. And I'd love to do like a watercolor cover or something where I get to use different materials. I don't think anybody wants, you know, a watercolor book these days. Plus it might kill me. I used to do watercolor for full color comics. I was looking at some of the comics I did while I was in college or when I first got out of college. And, um, you know, I didn't know, I didn't have, you know, the ability to do digital color right off the rip. Um, so I used what I knew how to do, and that was uh, watercolor. I would do photocopies on um, thicker paper, and then I would take those photocopies and uh, paint directly on them. I would mix whole cups of paint of watercolors, and I would do basically what they did in the old days, which is they would number um, different things as different colors. You know, this skin tone here is uh, R2Y2, or this um, blue is just pure cyan. I was doing that while also mixing the colors and, you know, coming up with what the system was. Um, and I think in my rough, yeah. In my rough, I had this as a full silhouette, but um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to leave it open so that when it's colored, because he's bright yellow, like his color is bright yellow, and he's pretty much the only bright yellow thing um, with orange spots. So that's his color. I think we'll we'll ink this Krakus and then we'll call it a night. One of the other things I use for his expressions is actually the rim of his, uh, what's actually his body. Um, you know, a squid has, or a cuttlefish has a head, and then it's his entire body is in this tube. Um, and all his organs are like along here. And then they have this long piece of cartilage that goes in the back. And the fins are on the side and the Sorry about that. Booted me off. Hopefully it doesn't do that again. Yeah. 
It's the kind of stuff that happens when you're doing live streams, I guess. Stuff does go wrong. But maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just when I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm sure I am. It's a uh... It would be nothing new I'm making my life harder. Uh, sorry, I got disconnected there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I generally agree with that, but if it comes out better by spinning it, I would absolutely give it a give it a whirl. Yeah, that's a, that makes sense, Doug. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give it a whirl because I, you know, I don't have the steadiest hands. Um, you know. And they're not getting any better as I get older. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Need one more hand. See, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes you just got to get that last tentacle in there. What time 
we got 939. I think I'm about to call it for the evening. Uh, in order to do the little stars, I've got to be at a different angle than where I'm standing. So we'll finish. Tentacles. As you can see, that's that's the shot, and uh, you know we'll uh, what time? We? Well, I guess we'll just keep plugging along. I'm actually kind of glad I'm going to be inking the um, the casino off camera, just because I need to use some French curves on these for sure. And with these little bursts, I don't want them to be perfect. I like having them be a little bit um, jagged. These little stars in his eyes. Gives him character. See, and that's the kind of thing that most cartoonists nowadays and most, most publications would want, like the perfect burst that, you know, you can get in Adobe Illustrator. I, I, I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be like kind of exaggerated and the edges to not be perfect. Because also like the difference between having the, the smooth lines on the characters with the brush and the uh, jagged lines with the pen, I think it creates a nice separation. Visually, at least, I, at least I think it does. I do want to have some different line variations. Well, I tend to think of a uh, comic cartoons like, you know, um, Ren and Stimpy or Rocco's Modern Life when we were kids and they had like a um, they had an aesthetic to them that was not as clean as like the Warner Brothers cartoons and with these I'm going to be putting a color hold on them anyway so you're not really going to see the lines nearly as well as you do right now Yeah, I, I totally agree. People still use them though. I don't have a problem with using some uh, of the digital spatter 
because if you vary the brush size, you can get sort of that chaotic element to it. If you use the same brush size, you can see the pattern over and over again. But if you vary the brush size, you can, especially if you're going to do it at 11 by 17 and shrink it down, it creates a nice... Cast shadow from the rocks, ones that are closer to. The... See, I thought about having like a little fellow, like a like a sea cucumber or something, walking along, but I wanted to isolate Krakus, and I think that we'll we'll reveal the inner inner workings of the casino on a future page, and you'll see all the little shrimp and the little uh, the regular people that are just gambling. And this is just to be sort of like when you um, down in like warmer water, the sand is like a ghost white on the bottom because it's mostly comprised of broken down shells. Oh, thank you, Doug. Um, so it's really just a texture that I want to get here, just a slight, and obviously more of it as you're further away. And this is actually a, um, a technique that I'll wholly admit that I learned from reading Walt Simonson comics. If you look at the way he does shorthand for uh, stone texture, he does it with a, a quill or a brush, but he does these little hatch lines that taper as you get closer to the light source. Um, and I am going to just rule this one line if I can find my straight edge. Okay. With it being one line, I can just use the edge of a bag and board. And I'm going to, because, eh, let's give it a shot, right? That's what we're here for. We're not here to mess around. We're here to have some fun. Let's see if I can do it. Eh, I'll probably clean them up digitally, but for just going for it, I'll live with it, especially with how bad I've been drawing the last couple of days. I have a page of yours, Douglas, and uh, I know you definitely don't go back and white out the overages, or at least you didn't on the page that I have. I think we're going to call it a night there. We had fun doing three panels with Krakus. 
stealing the money from the wallet, running away, and then arriving at the glistening golden doors of Poseidon's Casino. So um, thanks for hanging out. And um, sorry it got broken up, but that was a new type of disconnect today where the, the restream disconnected instead of the uh, actual um, uh, internet, which was weird because I'm hardwired. No one else is on the internet right now. So, hey, uh, we roll with the punches with the, uh, the live drawing. So uh, next Wednesday, we'll be back. Uh, same time, same channels. And um, I hope everybody has a, a lovely evening. And thanks for hanging out with me, Douglas. I, thanks for hanging out. I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a text in a second. And um, yeah, I hope everyone has a good night. Catch you later.